cut this out. A minor. It's, it's the vulnerability. And, it's, and like, listen, listen. When he was in that cave. Last time I checked, um, for adults, it takes 48 hours of disappearance before searches. Ah! We have the same war! Today's segment is actors, where are they now? So it's actors from our past, like maybe a show we used to watch or a movie we liked to watch when we were younger. And we really haven't heard from them in a while. We haven't seen them in anything. So we're just kind of, we're going to check up on them a little bit. Okay, okay. So I think this one's pretty interesting. Um... Do you remember Jason Earl? <laughs> Better known as Jackson from Hannah Montana. He's 46. Oh, damn. 46 years old. I'm sorry. Um, so how old was he? He was 28 when the first season of Hannah Montana was aired. So he ended up getting a new Disney show. Oh. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the show called Kicking it. I think so. I don't remember seeing him in there. He was um, a character called Rudy. Okay. And he was part of the main cast. So I'm assuming that this character is a part of like the Wasabi Warriors. Okay. And that show aired five seasons. Five seasons for a Disney show, it is pretty rare. It was a popular show. So from 2011 to 2015, so after Hannah Montana stopped filming, he went, Disney just took him and put him in another show. Yeah. So which lasted five six seasons, so until 2015. If you think about it, so Hannah Montana started filming in like 2005. So 2005 to 2015. So that's 10 years of working nonstop. So he took a break, a three year break. And then this is where, um, I don't know how to call it, like the one season curse for him started. Oh. <laughs> so in 2018, he became a reoccurring character in a new show at the time called Hotel Zuloon. He was the character called Flint Rogers. He started another show called Mood Swing. He was a character called Angel. So in 2023, I believe this is when like, we get a little step up. Joined the cast High School Musical, the musical series. He was playing a character called Dewey. He has a new role coming out. And his role, his name is called Taco Tom. And it's in a show called Second Chances. Basically he's been booked and busy. He took three years on vacation. Even though he's been on a little bit of a run, he can't get a show from longer than a season. He's in demand. Yeah. And so that's what's been happening with Jason Earl. So what you got for us? Okay. My actor is Alexa Nicola. You know Zoe 101? She played the best friend. The one that had glasses. Yes. Okay. She was one of my favorite characters. Yes. yes. She's come back into like the limelight a little bit because she's been doing interviews and podcasts pretty much explaining her experience while being on Nickelodeon. Okay. And her experience with Dan Schneider. Alexa was talking about how when she was on the show and then at a certain point there was a bit of a shift in Jamie's demeanor towards her, yeah. Mm. And that's when a character played by Victoria Justice shows up in the show. And one day Alexa goes into the trailer, like the makeup trailer, and she finds Jamie and Victoria talking to each other, like whispering. And then when they see Alexa, it's, not, it's like you can tell. It's just like a series of like bullying here and there. Like they had pushed her into a rock or something. Then they went to go see Dan Schneider. And when she went to explain everything that was going on, Dan was kind of annoyed. So it's almost like he was like implying like, okay, what do I need to get you to stop? So I believe the person that pushed her was removed from the cat. At one point, Jamie had uh, Brittany on set with her and she ran up to Brittany saying how oh like Alexa's bullying me something around those lines pretty much to get Brittany to get like very riled up they go into Alexa's trailer and just yell at her Brittany, like, Spears. Brittany yells at her pretty much. I, I don't know the quotes guys I don't quote me on and, and then in the midst of all of this bullying going on and Dan trying to buy her off 
Dan is also, as we know, creep. Mm-hmm. And every season or so, the characters would have a new outfit, right? So then Alexa would go to like the, the, the outfit fitting, but you could hear Dan, like let's say there was a curtain and I was changing and you were on the other side of it. You could almost, it's almost like I could hear you shuffling closer to the the like the curtain almost like you're trying to like accidentally take a peek she's dealing with the entire cast against her and then she's dealing with her director trying to do i don't even know what with her she is not acting but she's like i said she's going on podcasts and pretty much like explaining she's ready her to experience. Speak, tell her truth but also she now works as an activist against abuse in the like industry. She's also the same one that claimed that Jonah Hill pushed her against <gasps> like a, a door and shoved his oh, tongue down her throat. Ew! Mind you, she was 16 <laughs> and he was 24. Illegal. So she's been through it. Oh my god. A minor? I'm excited for this topic because we are doing our smash list, Disney animated edition. So the rules are we present our 10 smashes from controversial slash taboo um, themes. And the way we set it up is least controversial to most controversial. And I'm excited to see how many we get similar. Let's get started with number one, which is our least controversial option. Three, two, one. <laughs> I had a feeling he was gonna be on your list too. Oh, Captain Lee Shang is just... <laughs> okay, number two. I feel like this one, like, this is maybe where the list differs, yeah. but I feel like we're in the same range. Are you ready? I know who your second one might be, and he would be my second one, but as we know, I'm going through a phase right now. So the order somehow changed. Okay. But she is very easily, like she can easily be changed back. Okay. So I feel like the person you're gonna show is also on my list, just not in the order. <laughs> yeah. Three, two, one. See, see now he see. is on my list but i have never <laughs> i understand flynn rider lovers yeah i'm just i was never on the bandwagon it's just it's it's the vulnerability and it's and like listen listen when he was in that cave listen, you never watched the movie i did watch the movie when oh. he was in that cave with rapunzel and they were about to die and he admitted um y'all be you. weak in the knees like, stand up about to die. So this, we don't die quick but Stop. he admitted who he was and then went on to explain the story of why he changed his name, right? So he was an orphan. Nobody really cared about Eugene. So that he made up a character, almost like he made himself believe that he was somebody that he wasn't. And then he just became up to pretty much fake it so you make it. He is the prime example of fake it so you make it. So he and then he realized, list. I was the fake it to get which way. So he's on this list for pity? I don't know. <laughs> <pity. laughs> he is attractive. I don't know. I just think he didn't have to cut her hair that The short. character, the, okay. Can we, can we? Can we not talk about that? Her hair's never growing back. And he did he didn't even give her a bob. He gave her a Karen cut. The fuck? Let's call it a pixie cut. Like he, he couldn't gave give her, her a bob. Or he something? gave her the Alice haircut. Alice from Twilight. He gave her the Alice haircut. And nobody's judging Alice for it. Yeah, because Alice has styling creams. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, there you go. Okay, so I have the cat, like the cast of the entire cast of the Lost City of Atlantis, but these are my top five. Okay. Because this cast is scrumdilly yum yum, to be honest. Um, and then me, I have Naveen because as, excuse me, as you should. As Why you wouldn't should. I? Why wouldn't I? Now here's here's where like you won't you you more than likely do not have this person on your list, and that's okay. <laughs> Super soup? Where's my super soup? <laughs> no, there's something like, mysterious about Tadashi. Something about like a dying man. A uh, yeah. I feel like he's the type where it's like he's attractive and he's funny. Come on. Um. He's. he's doesn't not he ugly? Doesn't he have a receding hairline in the movie? Of 
course. He's bald. Uh, even better. He he accepted. Bald by choice. He accepted that he was losing his yeah. hair. Yeah, yeah. It's better to choose And we it. need to respect that. Yes. Come on. Okay. I have my next one. I don't think you know this person. Okay. You know this person. And I think you would not be surprised that this person is on my list. Three, two, one. I know. <laughs> is it from El Dorado? No. Not El Dorado, but the other one. The other low budget one in that type. The Prince of Some. He's in one of those movies. No. Which one is he in? This is Sinbad. He's Sinbad. But that's literally those type of movies. Well, yeah, those type of movies, but not the movies you were about to name. Anyways. He looked like that type of animation. Sinbad? I that understand why he's on your, on your list. Huh? I understand why he's on your list. It's all about a character. Sure, let's be real. He looks like Flynn Rider. Yeah, with the same, tag. Same person, different font. This one, I feel like you'll understand. I hope that you'll understand. And I'll just say you understand, but then judge me on the side. I understand this one as well. Okay. Three, two, two one. one. Yeah. Why? Why are you giving a speech about judgment? I'm no. Listen, the and then you is, judge, I judge me. You. I can't judge you because my next few, you will judge me. You can't tell me this. This fox wasn't giving you certain urges during the movie. He had Riz. How the fuck this this fox had Riz? That bunny could have been on my list too. Come on, she was built. Come on, nobody say. Disney you. had no right. Giving that bunny a body yaddy yaddy. Okay? But Nick Wilde? Yes. Nick Wilde's fine as fuck. I'm ready. Three, two, one. Who the fuck is that? <laughs> it's a black screen. Oh! Sorry. Oh, from Brother Bear. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I thought she was like, who the fuck is that? Like, you didn't know this video. I'm like, I have Scar. Scar, I get it. I was considering putting him on my list, but then another feline took it. I over. thought, so. On my thought, knowing you, yeah. I thought you were gonna put his son, and I said you can have the son. I, I want the papa. See, you're vanilla at this point because I have not been in can humans. We wait? Can we wait until we 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 show what we have? On I the haven't right been. Now? I haven't shown you a human since four. Can we? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay, three, three, two, two one. one. I get it. I don't understand. You don't understand the prince of the forest from Bambi. Why was she asking? For a judgment-free space, and then proceed First to judge all, me. You know him by title, <laughs> the Prince of the Forest and Bambi. I'm not gonna lie. When I watch Bambi, thinking back at it, it feels like a fever dream. I feel. I like can't tell you what the story is except for the mama dies. I think he's in the second one. You don't you see him much. The second of... one. Did you not? I saw the trailer for the second one and you saw know him. I was expecting on your list. You know what? I'm not gonna say because we got we got two more to go. So he might be on your list. <laughs> okay. So I'm just gonna wait. I'm just gonna wait. Who was yours again? Yeah. Diego. Diego's fine from my age. Again, I thought this was a controversial list, not something that's obvious. Diego could get it. The fuck? Mm. I I feel like I've lost you a few numbers ago, and it's fine. I stand my ground on my opinion. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Here, here's where you might be like, we're going backwards, but let's do this. Mm -hmm. Three, two, two one. one. I think that makes sense. Why do you keep thinking these are controversial? It's not that it's controversial, it's the fact that he has no face. A faceless man with a body like this don't matter. So the Wiz from Proud Family? Absolutely. Now, let's debrief. Flick. And Princess Ada, yeah. Really? You don't think so? At least the princess. You know what? If you had said the cricket, I would have understood. I almost put Hopper. I would have understood. But Hopper, he was too much of a villain for me. Ready for number 10? I just don't feel like this is a safe space anymore. And you've been judging me I'm since not. halfway through this. I feel like this one you'll understand. But it's still a bit, a bit like, are you, are you for real? I'm not even going to say you're going to understand because you haven't been understanding me. So, <laughs> Three, I'm just going to hold for the two, best. One. Ah! We have the same word! 
Well, we don't have to talk about Don Jose. Because he will get it. And he Shit. can get it. Shit, he can change my oil, you know? <laughs> he sounds like the guy in those, like, commercials there. Oh, good. Have you ever been bitten by what's the getting new by your girlfriend because she has a twin sister and you got confused and fucked her dad? <laughs> That's how it feels to drop a Ford F-250. <laughs> That's what this voice reminds me of. That is a promo to buy a Ford No, F it's not. But, like, this oh, is okay, because I was like, <laughs> it's what this voice reminded me of. Our first ones were the same, our last one was the same, in the middle we lost each other. I honestly thought Spirit was going to be on that list. It's not Disney. Let us know in the comments if you guys want us to do DreamWorks. <laughs> Actually, also let us know if you have anybody in common, uh, in common with us from because, our list. Because this must... And if there's somebody even more problematic, although she may say it's not, this is a safe space. I won't judge. She clearly did. She clearly did. I will not judge. Leave it down in the comments below. All right. So today I have a challenge for us. On a scale of one to ten, how much of a pickle girly are you? Three. A three? And this is great because no better way than making you go higher in your pickle likeness mm -hmm. than trying some pickle combos. So this comes straight from her TikTok. Oh God. <laughs> so we have three combos to try. Mm -hmm. So we have pickles and, this is the order by the way. Pickles and mustard. Okay. Pickles and cream cheese. Mm -hmm. And pickles and peanut butter, which a lot of people like. So I'm saving the best for last, of course. How do you feel? This custard. <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to say that because some people like these. I don't feel enticed. So the reason I thought we should start with mustard mm -hmm. is because mustard is pretty acidic and pickles are pretty like I feel like mustard and relish go together. So like this should not be bad. So I'm going to prep it and then we're going to try it. Okay. This is what it looks like. All right. Cheers. Mm -hmm. I can't even taste the mustard. How do you feel? Could be worse. Mm -hmm. Definitely could be better. Hopefully we've got those two better options. We'll score this out of 10. A three. A three? Because this tastes like, like you said, like relish and, and mustard go together. Like it tastes like when you get like a burger mm. all dressed. Yeah. I give that, I give this a seven. Like a six. A six, because there's nothing special. On that note, we're going to try creme cheese. That one, I am weirdly excited for. I, I feel like it's going to work together. I think so, too. I think so, so. What does it looks like, guys? Cut the show. I'm done. Take me off. Take me off. Cut the show. <coughs> This time it's not gonna fall. I like this. I just feel like the pickle in the beginning overpowers the cream cheese and then at the end you get a cream cheese aftertaste. I get this one a seven. This one? Mm -hmm. A six. Next one is the one I'm most like anticipating. It is the peanut butter. And pickle. I've seen so many videos. Pickles and peanut butter. I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to feel. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. I like that. I don't know if I like it more than the cream cheese. The only reason why I'm conflicted is because the peanut butter has a strong taste. Like, you know how like the pickle was overpowering in the first bite, that's all you taste? The peanut butter contradicts that. Like, it almost tastes like nothing. Mm -hmm. But I'm not mad at it now. <laughs> what the fuck? Come back. 
I've seen people eat it in a sandwich. Would I eat it in a sandwich? No. I feel like the bread actually would make it possibly taste better. But then I'm also thinking of what it would be like with cream cheese. And I would prefer the cream cheese. Like mm. a cream cheese bagel and maybe put a little bit of pickle on it. Maybe I would like it. Mm. Struggle meal. <laughs> so, on a scale of one to ten, how did you feel about that one? A five. I think a five is a good, it's a good rating for this. I would give it a five as well. Um, if you guys want us to try any of your cravings or food combos, please leave it in the comments below. All right, guys. This segment, I will be reading a story that I found on Reddit. It's called, if this ever happens, don't answer the door, hide, lock everything, and never look into their eyes. I know that this sounds like the kind of advice to anyone left alone in the house at night, but this is different. It started a week ago. I was in bed and it had just turned one. I was scrolling on my phone while my wife Steph was asleep. I suddenly had a notification pop up at the top of my phone. Anyone with a video doorbell will be accustomed to this, motion detected. I normally ignore it as it was either a car coming down the road or a person stumbling back home after a night out. Then the doorbell chimed. The notification followed. There's a person at your front door. I opened the app. There sure enough was a young woman standing, clinging onto my door frame. I answered, hello, can I help you? She came back immediately. Please let me in. Someone is chasing me. I told her to stay where she was and I would call the police. I heard her again. Please let me in. He's going to hurt me. Please hurry. At this point, my wife woke up. She asked me what I was doing. As I put some clothes on, ready to go downstairs, I said there was a woman at our door begging to come in. Someone was chasing her. It was about I was about to dial for the police when Steph opened the app. She said, babe, no one is there. We look back on the motion in history. Both our notifications were, were logged. I opened the first one, nothing but our front porch. I proceeded to the other notification where someone had pressed the doorbell. There was my front porch, shrouded in darkness, but this time we could hear only my voice. Of course there was no response to my questions. I thought to myself, was I going crazy? My wife said I was late, I must have been half asleep, and my mind was playing tricks on me. Even if that was right, it still didn't explain why we got the notification. The next night, we both sat binging a Netflix show in our living room. We must have lost track of time as it was nearly 1 in the morning. I went to check the back door was locked when my phone buzzed. I asked Steph whether she had the same. She had. I opened the app just as it notified me that someone had pressed our doorbell. We both quickly opened the live view, stood at our front door, a child. The young boy must have been no older than eight. The camera was in night vision, which was black and white. The boy's face glowed, eyes piercing through my screen. I once again answered, hello, can I help? The kid looked up at the camera. Hi, my daddy broke down just up the road and his phone is dead. Can you please let me in? I need to use your phone. Me and Steph looked at each other. We shook her, she shook her head at me. I replied to him, I can call someone out for you or maybe the police can help? The boy then seemed to turn. His voice now had anger to it. Open the door. I need help. Are you going to let me stay out here all alone? His story had changed. I went back after swallowing my own fear. Stay there. I will get help. This time I called the police. They came around 20 minutes later. By this point, no one was around. We had seen the boy walk off around the corner five minutes after I had got off the phone. The officers checked our road and the surrounding area. They found no people, not even the odd car driving around. We both tried to show them the app, but obviously there was nothing there. The two officers were understanding and seemed to believe us. They gave us the department's direct number and told us to call them if anything happens again. We went to bed that night scared and confused. We didn't understand what or why this was happening to us. The next day, we decided to get an early night. We made sure everything was locked and the house secure. We both fell asleep early. I was awoken up at just gone to one to the sound of two sets of buzzing from my phone. I ignored these, I just rolled over and went to sleep. When I looked at my phone in the morning, I opened up the doorbell app. Video playback showed nothing, but I could hear scratching for about two to three seconds after the apparent press of the doorbell. I went downstairs and checked the door. Three sets of four deep scratches went down my front door. The anxiety hit me like a tidal wave going through my body. I now feared the night ahead of us. Two nights ago, we both had decided to stay up. We were going to put an end to this. We were on edge in our own home and it wasn't right. The minutes drew closer to that damn time 1am. 
Then, right on schedule, the notification started. I opened the app and now stood there with one of the policemen. He was one of the officers that was with us the other night. I thought it was strange. It caught me off guard. Steph said that she would look out the window upstairs. We had both said earlier that one of us would look out the window to confirm if someone was really there. I answered the door. Hello, officer. Can I help you? He looked into the camera. We have an update on the problem you have been having. Can you please open the door? I felt a sense of confliction come over me. This didn't feel right. I had watched enough police programs and dramas to know they usually have to report to places with another officer. The lack of any police cars also unnerved me. Sorry, officer. I'm sure you can understand the reluctancy to open the door due to our situation. He snapped back. It's fine. I'm an officer of the law and instructing you to please open up. I need to come in and update you. Now I knew something was wrong. His whole demeanor was now completely different to when we spoke two nights ago. I watched as his head looked upwards. I heard my wife scream the words, Oh my god! His eyes. What the fuck? I rushed up the stairs, my feet slipping as I ran. I saw Steph, but she looked petrified. She stared at me blankly and said, You need to let him in. He will help us. I uttered bad struggling to catch my breath. We can't. You know we can't. What did you see? What was wrong with his eyes? She tilted her head at me. Her eyes began to roll upward. Let him in. Let. Him. In. Her tone started to change. It was turning into a gravely raspy voice. Her, vo her face now full of anger as she screamed at me. Let him in now. I grabbed her and shook her while shouting, Steph, listen to me, snap out of it. She looked back at me dazed and confused. She said wearily with tears in her eyes, I want to go to bed. I said, only if you are okay. She said that she was fine and didn't know what happened. I checked the video feed once more, no one was there. It took me a few hours to fall asleep worrying about what happened to Steph. When I woke up the next morning, Steph was gone. Her phone and jewelry left on the bedside cabinet. I went downstairs and searched for her, but nothing. She wasn't in the house. I called the police department on the number I was given, spoke to the partner of the policeman that was at my door. I told them everything that happened and that my wife had gone missing. They told me the officer that stood at my door eight hours earlier was on leave. He flew out on a holiday yesterday morning. It couldn't have been him. In the hours ahead, a search team was assembled and I joined them in searching the local area. There was no sign of her. It's now 11 p.m. I'm sitting alone in my living room, my head now full of fear and radiating pain. I just want my stuff home. I just want normality back. Here it comes. Three, two, one. The notifications came through. I opened the app. Steph was at the front door. I almost half expect I almost half expecting it. I said, Where were you, honey? She looked into the camera. I was taken, but I escaped. I'm here now. Let me in and I will tell you all about it. I took a deep breath, sighed. Okay, I'll be there in a minute, babe. What can I do? She is my wife. I am nothing without her. I wrote all of this throughout this evening, hoping for some sort of closure, maybe even a happy ending to this horrible experience. I guess now it will just be a piece of evidence on what happened to both of us. I need to answer the front door now. My wife is home. Creepy. Yes. Do I believe in this? No. Because, yeah. <laughs> oh, so right before the wife that looked petrified the day before, this dude writes it all down. So, him realizing it's her, he's typing. Her response, he's typing. Right before he goes, he types, concludes, posts on Reddit, and then allows his wife to enter the home, then you damn well know that I ain't his wife no more. Also, is it just me? Or the last time I checked um, for adults, it takes 48 hours of disappearance before searches? She had the whole town? I think it's because of, like, given the fact that it had been a few days of them having, like, somebody knocking at their door. But there's no evidence. I don't... I'm just the reader! Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm skeptical. And I believe in all the spooky, hooky, booze type stories. And that, it's creepy though. Yeah. Like, I've heard a similar story. The difference was this guy had just moved into the neighborhood and everybody said, no matter what you do at 3 a.m., do not let it in and do not look into its eyes. 
So this happened to everybody in the neighborhood. And so every day at 3 a.m., then it wasn't at the door, it was at the window. So it's like someone knocking at the window, let me in, let me in, let me in, for like 20 minutes straight, and then it stopped. So like, as this was a daily occurrence for him, months had gone by and he coped. Like he found a ways to like, um, work around it. He had fans on, a lot of white noise basically. And so, um, one day he explains to like his two like co-workers that are the, his best friends. Mm -hmm. He explains to him what happens and then people are like, they're both like, we have to do a sleepover to hear it. He's like, no. <laughs> He's like, not happening. I can tell you about my experiences. Mm -hmm. And so they go out and they're chilling, they're drinking, whatever. So it's close to 3 a.m. but everybody's delirious and drunk. And so they have to go to his place because his place is the closest. Yeah. So they get there and he's like prepping them. We're all gonna be in this room. We're all gonna do this. Nobody fucking. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be rough. You're gonna be scared. But 20 minutes, it's gonna stop. So the knocking stops as scheduled. Mm -hmm. And they're like freaking out. And one of the best friends was there's a dude, because one's a dude and one's a girl. Mm -hmm. He's like, now he has to. So what he does is like he gets intrigued and he opens the blinds and then he turns kooky like the wife mm. and then he unlocked the window and then basically that's how it ends but it's like how do we know Cause clearly you were gonna end up like them mm. you know it's like but then also i don't know it's just like when like people like are going through hard stuff and then they're about to cry and then they press record. I don't I just don't see you typing post and then ready to die. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's just my thing. No, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. But this is a great story. It had left me on the edge of my seats. Like I love the way it ended, how it's like it's up to you to like imagine what could have happened and mm. what could have caused all of this. Yeah. I wonder if there's like a ritual to try to summon this entity that we could try. Immediately wow. no. Immediately no. I'm telling you right now, I seen see what enough. I needed to see. Hey. So, that wraps up today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. We had fun. Well, at least I had fun. I had fun too. Uh -huh. Okay next week we're gonna have a new content for you guys and if you have any suggestions leave them down in the comments below mm -hmm.